and okay, Megabuds, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the top 16 decklists from Stuttgart Regionals. I'm super excited to go over all these regional decklists here, because not only do we have some new decks appearing on the scene, but we got some other ones that are kind of making a bit of a comeback now, and I'm super excited to talk about all of them. But before we get into the decklist here, don't forget to leave a like, smash the subscribe button, because I really do appreciate every single one of you guys, and I really do appreciate all of your support. Alright, so let's jump right in to these decklists. Alrighty guys, so starting us off here in 16th place, we got Tord Reklev's Lost Box, Paradox, Tina, Combo? I don't know. The number 16 we'll call it. We'll call it the Tord Reklev number 16. So, this deck is very interesting. It's kind of like a combo between Lost Tina, it's got Kyogre in it, it's got your Kremlin and Sableye like normal, but it's also got Roaring Moon and Iron Hands for the mirror match and stuff. So this deck's very interesting, right? Because you would think, oh, well, you're just going to use Star Requiem because you're going to have 10 in the Lost Zone. But we're also playing this Forest Seal Stone down here. And the reason you're playing Forest Seal Stone is there are games where you're not going to need to start Requiem sometimes. So maybe using that Forest Seal Stone might be a little bit better. But this deck is very interesting because you got, like, the Energy Recyclers and Super Odds to be able to KO big with Kyogre towards the end of the game. You got, you're able to pull off Greninja plays. You're able to use Iron Hands. You got the One Grass Energy to be able to use your Giratina V-Star if you need to. And I am all in on this. This deck looks like tons of fun, and I'm super excited to give it a shot, especially as a person who's been playing Lost Tina, I'd say pretty consistently for the last like two-ish months now. I'm definitely excited to give this, give this list a shot. So, super cool deck, super unique. I'm sure we're going to see more of these type of versions of decks, like Lost Box Paradox type equivalents, here in the future, especially with Iron Hands or Roaring Moon just being such good, cool cards, especially in the Lost Zone variants. All right, going to our 15th place here, we got Gardevoir. Now, Gardevoir has been around for a while, and we know it's not going anywhere, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, because this list is pretty similar to all the other ones we've seen. It's got Professor Turo Scenario, which I think is a perfect include in almost every Gardevoir deck you're playing. you got the Cresselia and the Screamtail to be able to kind of go back and forth between their Manaphys and their Jirachis and such. I like the Mirage Step Curlia. I like the Luxurious Cape to make your Screamtail even bigger, and... Just the double Avery is really good. I love that they're playing four Iono in this deck. I, I saw a lot of lists where people were like cutting Ionos for Averys, and I'm like, no, 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 four Iono, please do not cut Ionos for Averys. Play four Iono and make room for two Averys somewhere else, which this person did, and I'm super glad. Going to our 14th place here, we got Snorlax Stall. Now, this deck is a little bit different than the ones we've been seeing because the other ones we had like one battle VIP pass. They didn't really play hammers or chromatics or anything or cross receiver. Um, but this person decided to play cross receiver and chromatics and crushing hammers, and hey man, it worked. I think it's a really good include for chromatics. I think crushing hammer is perfect, especially in decks like Charizard where they're really wearing their energy count very thin and cross receiver is a really cool card so you have to play two at once so kind of like cross switcher but you put a pokemon or supporter card from your discard pile into your hand so you're able to go double cross receiver grab misfortune sisters or double cross receiver grab a snorlax so you eliminate having to be able to play multiple super rods or even clara or thing of that nature because you just play cross receiver and i think that's awesome especially because in a deck where Snorlax Stall, you're using instant charge and you're drawing tons of cards. The chance you're going to have two cross receivers in your hand, pretty high. So, I like cross receivers in the deck. I think it's a cool combo. I think it's a neat thing to be doing. And not shocked to see Snorlax Stall up here. It's a good deck and it's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Alright, going into our 12th, sorry, our 13th place, 13th place like here, we got Charizard EX with Pidgeot. Now, I had not really been a believer that Charizard is going to be continuing to do well, but it's putting up numbers still. It's still super powerful to overcome and being able to pair it with Pidgeot and being able to just play things like Minior in the deck that fit perfectly. You're able to put in so many different tech cards and the fact that Infernal Rain does what it does, it's so easy to power up energies right onto your Charizard because you don't need to do what Lost Box is where you gotta get tons of stuff in the Lost Zone or Maridon where you gotta hit Jennies and get Dynamoters and stuff. Charizard, all you gotta do is just Rare Candy Evolve and put two onto it. And I love that. I like this split of Charmander. I still think that this Charmander needs to be sold out for the Ember one. 
And this Charmeleon needs to be a 100 HP Charmeleon. I like the split of Pidgey. I like the 60 HP Pidgey, and I like the 50 Call for Family Pidgey, just in case if you need to call for family. But you could also just get away with playing, like, 260 Pidgeys or 250 Pidgeys. It doesn't really matter how you split these. Um, but if you really want to do that, you can. Call for Family makes sense, especially if you can't really get set up. You have that little additional chance to get set up i guess and mini or for your stall mirror your stall matchup because your stall matchup with charizard ex is not the greatest in the world so you definitely need something to help with that and mini or is the perfect card for it you got drachi manaphy to you know protect your babies and your baby charmanders baby pidgeys and stuff like that you know you got your four arvins definitely playing arvins are got a road tom which is a little spicy in here i like the dominion i kind of wish there was room for like an entei in here um i think entei is a perfect backup attacker in this deck um, or even like maybe Radiant Charizard or something. I would like to see maybe you go down and cut like the Rotom and get rid of that for like maybe a Radiant Zard or an Entei or something. I just, I feel like the Rotom's fine. I mean, you're able to quick search. So Insta Charge is kind of like, meh, you don't really need to do it, I feel like. But hey, this person took us all the way to 14th place or 13th place. My goodness, get your numbers right. 13th place. So shout out to them. All right, going into our 12th place deck here, we got Maridon. Now, Maridon is a very interesting deck. 1, 2, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Perfect. We're not cutting that out. That's staying in. All right, Maridon's a very interesting deck here because... This one's playing Tapu Koko EX, and I don't dislike Tapu Koko EX. I just feel like it's not the thing you should be playing. I think you just swap Tapu Koko out for maybe like a Mew or a second Raichu, maybe even. But this person is playing not the Turbo Turbo version, because both Maridon Vex that we've seen now are very fast and very turbo, but there's one that's very clearly like the I'm gonna churn through half of my deck now. And this one is kind of more to like do more tuned for the late game, if it were. But I like Mar I like this list of Maridon. It's probably my favorite list of Maridon. The double bravery charm is really, really good because you really make your lost box matchup a little bit difficult. Um, putting bravery charm on Maridon or Raikou or things of that nature make it really hard for lost box to be able to lost mine things away. Because not only are you really fast and aggressive and you can outspeed them, but you're making it so they can't just go, okay, Kramer and attack your Raikou. And then put nine damage counters on that, put three on Flaffy, and then you set up next turn to be able to go six on Flaffy, six somewhere else, or Greninja it, or what have you, right? So, I like this list a lot. I'm not a huge fan of the Super Rod, though. I think you could probably cut Super Rod for maybe, like, another Switch effect. I, I get why it's in here, and it makes sense, but... I also prefer four path to the peak in my Maridon list, so maybe you cut this for another path, because being able to just go, all right, get everything set up, turn one, path, go. Feels so good. All right, going into our 11th place deck here, we got Lost Tina. Now, Lost Tina is definitely changing out a lot of their tech cards to kind of gear towards the format now. Like this list is playing two cram, one Sableye. But usually we were playing two Sableye, one Cram. We are also playing a Spirit Tomb in here to be able to kind of make your Mew match up a little bit easier and things of that nature. But this list is also playing Raihan, Avery, and we're playing Cleansing Gloves. Now, Raihan is very good, I think, in a lot of decks just because of its sheer, you're getting a knockout, put an energy on something, and go find a card. Avery's really good against the Mirror Match because you're able to discard a lot of their Comfes or their Mana Fees, and you put decks in position where... You're going to force them to discard their Sableye, or sorry, their Jirachi to not counter your Sableye, or to maybe even discard your Manaphy, their Manaphy, so you can Greninja that turn. But Cleansing Gloves is very interesting. The attacks of this Pokemon, of the Pokemon this card is attached to, do 30 more damage to your opponent's Psychic Pokemon. So, this is a perfect card for Mew, because you attach this to Giratina, 280, plus 30, 310. So you're able to KO Mew VMAXs, and Gardevoir EXs, which is really, really nice, because I feel like those matchups are a little bit tougher for Giratina to overcome, but this person definitely tooled this deck up so they're able to overcome them, and I think this is a good list. I, you know, this list is very similar to what I'm playing. I'm playing, you know, I'm not playing Cleansing Gloves or Raihan or Avery, but everything else in this list is pretty gosh darn close to what I've been doing. Alright, going into our 10th place deck here, we got Charizard EX again. 
Once again, it's got the road time in here. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it because we kind of talked about one of these earlier. But the other thing that I really want to point out in this one is Vitality Band. I think Vitality Band is a card that you don't need to have in this deck. Defiance Band is great. Defiance Band is a really good card in Charizard. I just, I'm not sold on Vitality Band in Charizard. I haven't been, and I probably won't continue to be for quite some time. Once again, Charizard spl Charmander split up a little bit weird. Change this Charmeleon to 100 HP Charmeleon. And the Pidgey, whatever one you pick is what you pick. I don't really, it doesn't matter to me that much. I don't, I don't care personally if I was playing Charizard. Uh, but I probably would play the 60 ones over the 50 ones. Just because if they were to go to Sableye, they're not going to have two extra damage counters to deal with. Um, but I also could be convinced to play the double 50 because Call for Family could be really good depending on the situation you're in. And the row time here... I don't love it. I don't hate it. I think it's interesting because it helps you get set up a little bit easier early in the game. Um, but at the same time, you don't necessarily need it because you can just quick search assuming that they don't have like path. Because even if they have path, they just shut off your instant charge. So once again, I'm not too sure. I like how this person's playing level ball on the deck so they can find all the other small Pokemon they have. Um, I like Avery in this list. I think Avery's a really good, like, one of in Charizard decks. I think Avery's just a good card in a lot of decks right now, just because a lot of decks want to go super wide in their strategies. I think just having one copy of Avery is really strong. All right, going into our ninth place deck here, we got Turbo Roaring Moon. Now, Turbo Roaring Moon is a deck that I'm still not quite sold on. And the reason I'm not sold on it is because it's it's turbo and it's fast and if you can get everything rolling in that turn that's great but the moment you stumble or slow down or you miss a beat with your energy switch or your dark patch or whatever it's gonna be so difficult to come back and win and i think that's something that a lot of people are taking for granted right now is that this deck is i would probably say one of the most prone to bricking right now in the format um next to like chimpow back scalibur but if you are able, in a best of three format, you only got to get, you know, two of them, right? But in a best of one, I feel like you got to really have luck on your side when turning through this deck because you need to be able to Calamity Storm and maybe KO some, like, Vs early on if you can by discarding some stadiums. And Frenzy and Gouging, if you don't have that capsule on there and you're going against Lost Box, that's free pickings. I mean, that's just three damage counters on it. Take a KO if you don't have the uh, a booster capsule on it. So I'm not super sold on turbo roaring moon or turbo dark or whatever we're calling this deck i don't love it i don't hate it i've tried it a little bit on pokemon tcg live and i've had some success but i've also had too many games where i'm just like all right i've whiffed on every single i need an energy switch to this turn or an earthen vessel or a dark patch or professor slater's vitality and i'm like okay top deck fine boss well that's not what i want all right pass because i can't conceal cards and get discard energy because i don't have any and i can't find anything so it just for those reasons i feel like roaring moon turbo is just it's in the middle for me so not a bad deck not a great deck all right moving in to our eighth place here we got lost box charizard ex now i had once said that lost box charizard ex is probably the worst variant of charizard ex you can play and i still stand by that statement However, I think this deck, if you're going to play Lost Box Charizard deck, is the like, perfect 60 almost. You got the double cram for your choruses because you only need to get the four. You got one Sableye just in case if you get to the end game because you got Lost Vacuum and stuff. You got Lost Cities, so things are going to get put in the Lost Zone a weird odd amount of times by not by necessarily choruses experiment necessarily, but you would be able to Lost Vacuum things or have Lost City out and then your, you know, your Comfe or your Cramorant gets KO'd that goes into the loss zone, and that counts, right? So having one Sableye, one Psychic Energy in the deck kind of makes sense to me. But if you're going to play Lost Box Charizard EX, I think this is the perfect one. Not only because this Charmander split is the perfect one that I want, but also because you got Jirachi and Manaphy to really stop any, you know, Screamtails or Greninjas or Cresselias or anything of that nature. But... Charizard EX lets you, whenever you evolve, you get to look for three Fire Energies and put them wherever you want. So you put two on Charizard and then you can even power up like Greninja or power up another Charmander on the bench or even a Comfey to retreat out of instead of having to use Mirage Gates, which this deck still does play Mirage Gates on top of that. 
So I like this version of Lost Box Charizard EX, and if I were to pick up and play Lost Box Charizard EX, this is pretty much the exact six that I'm going to go with. So shout out here, super cool deck, very interesting, and I like to see it. All right, going into our seventh place deck here, we got Rapid Box. Now, Rapid Box kind of made a resurgence once TM Evolution came out because it really slows down a lot of their decks, and you're able to just put damage counters on some stuff and then go, okay, DM Evolution, the damage counters still stay, and then you can KO the baby Pokemon underneath. So things like Gardevoir, where they're putting damage counters on stuff and then take KO, and you're like, okay, Double Gunner, Double Gunner, uh, D-Evolution. Take, like, three prizes because... Pokemon are getting de-evolved, right? So you're able to like, okay, de-evolve each one of your opponents evolved Pokemon. So if they got Gardevoir, Gardevoir, Gardevoir EX, and you put a couple damage counters on those things and move them around with Radiant on Kazam and stuff, boy, oh boy, you're taking some big prizes with it. So I really think that this is probably the closest we're going to get to Rapid Box being, I would say, relevant again. Because De-Evolution and Earthen Vessel really put these decks back on the map. And I'm really glad to see it because I did like my time playing Rapid Box. It just wasn't quite the deck I was looking for at the time. So, maybe on our next place deck here, we got sixth place. We got another Rapid Box deck. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one. It's kind of almost the exact same as this one here. The only thing that's different is it's got, like, Professor Turo Scenario in it. And, you know, this one has Irida. And instead of, you know, this one doesn't play any Irida. It just plays, like, Melanie's and Arvin's and such. But this one's kind of going for more than our traditional one that, we're, that we were thinking of, where you're trying to, like, yoga loop more often, and you're trying to take bigger KOs with G-Max Rapid Flow, as opposed to this one, where they're really trying to look like they're going for, like, the D-Evolution combo. Because this has only got one copy of it, so... Very similar decks, but different supporters to get to the same goal, I would say. So, very unique. Like to see it. I would still probably play this version over this one, but that's just me. Alright, going into our fifth place deck here, we got... DTE Mew, and DTE Mew, and I've said it, and I will continue to say it, and I know you guys are probably so sick of hearing me say it, but DTE Mew and Mew VMAX is not going anywhere until it rotates. It's going to be here forever, and it's going to keep putting up placements, and it just will. I don't know how it does. There's so many counters to Mew right now, but Mew still survives, and Mew will probably continue to survive for, well, until it rotates. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, super cool deck we got here. We got Heavy Lost Vacuum, Heavy Grab, which I love to see. You got your Path, you got your DTEs, you got Heavy Four Seal Stones, you got Box of Disaster and such. You know, just the same DTE Mew we've been seeing for a while now. Alright, going to our fourth place deck, we got Lost Box Paradox, as I'm pretty sure what this list is exactly called. And this one's got the Roaring Moon, it's got Galarian Moltres, it's got Iron Hands, it's got Raikou, it's got Tropius, Minior, Greninja, Cram, but no Sableye, which is interesting. Because this diversion, we're only carrying to get to 7. Because the moment we get to 7, then we can start turboing all of our energies onto these other Pokemon right here. And you got kind of answers to a lot of stuff, right? You got Roaring Moon to take big knockouts and Fringing Gouging for the end of the game. Or Calamity Storm for big damage if you need to. Iron Hands for any sort of Palkia decks or any sort of Water decks or, you know, Lost Box decks you're going to be against. Take some extra prizes. Cut Galarian Moltres to be able to just like a backup attacker or be able to just power some energies up onto it with its ability Dire Flame Wings to be able to take KOs on things like Gardevoir or Mew. And you got Raikou as well, just a little bit of a turbo variant, I would say. Very easy, quick attack you can get set up and start rolling. And then, of course, you got Tropius to be able to deal with your Charizard because its rally back attack does more damage if, attack, if a Pokemon was knocked out next turn, which then lets you be able to KO Charizards. Or maybe even other Roaring Moons or other Dark Ride decks or any other Turbo Moon decks going around right now. Tropius is able to help with that. And then you got Minio, of course, as well for that little bit of that Storm Like Stall matchup, um, which is really nice. And I like the one additional gift. I like the one copy of Gift Energy. I think it's very interesting to put it in here because normally you don't see special energies in Lost Box decks. However, I'm pretty sold on this gift energy i like it i think it makes a lot of sense and sometimes you can refill your hand and there are times in lost box where well your hand can get a little low i was playing yesterday and i'm playing lost tina and i had one card in my hand and i'm like well this feels really weird after you know usually having 15 in my hand so the one copy of gift energy is very exciting and you could just put it right under the mini or expecting it to get ko'd and then just you know the ko'd gift energy might trigger it might not Super Effective Glasses is also very good include, especially because this is a very much like Toolbox Lost Box deck where you're trying to really counter what your opponent's doing and stuff. 
So I like that. I'm definitely excited to pop this into TCG Live and definitely give it a shot. So we'll have to see. So very, very nice list. Shout out to our top four here. Very cool. Moving into our top three here, we got our traditional Lost Tina with just heavy path. You got, you know, your two copies of Water Ninja, so you can pull off Greninja. You got the one Cram, two Sableye. You got two boss, two one counter catcher. I will be 100% honest with you guys. This is literally my almost exact 60. The only thing that's different in mine is I'm playing two counter catcher, one boss. I'm playing three path, three switch cart in exchange for two escape ropes. That's it. This is exact copy paste my list. I'm not kidding. Oh, and sorry, Manaphy. Cut a rock sand for Manaphy. That's my list. That is my perfect, that's my 60. So this is pretty gushed on close to my 60. And it feels pretty good to see it so far up here because if I'm going to any sort of big events lately, I'm probably repping Lost Tina right now. Um, it's just kind of the safe pick, I feel like. And I feel like Lost Tina is really in a position where you're 50-50 against everything and you got a couple favorable, maybe two unfavorable. But other than that, as long as flower selecting's be hitting good and as long as you're able to get set up a little bit, you have a good shot in just about any matchup right now. I love to see that. Going to our second place deck here, we got another Maridon deck. Now, this is probably closer to the, like, turn one turbo variant that I was talking about earlier, where you're playing, like, the beach course, so you can retreat, less path, more four seal stone, you got Judge, and you got Ionos, and Professor Research, and Squawk and Seas, and Restart, so you're able to just really start discarding cards and start turning through that deck to be able to get set up, things set up and start rolling so you can start taking KOs with Raikou or Iron Hands early on, because this deck has more potential to get KOs with Iron Hands earlier in the game than the other list we had seen earlier. I also love the Lost Vacuum in Maridon. I think Lost Vacuum is a perfect card to be putting in Maridon. And the reason I think it's a perfect card to be putting in Maridon is because a lot of decks sometimes will go first to play against a Maridon player so they can put Path down early so they can't tandem unit. Because this deck doesn't play Battle VIP Pass to get set up, it uses tandem unit instead. So being able to play the Lost Vacuum to be able to remove your opponent's path and then being able to do all your stuff, get all set up, and then dump another path is really strong. So I love to see that here. I think Lost Vacuum is a crazy good card to be putting in, in Maradon right now, and I'm glad someone finally is. All right, for our first place list, Lost Box Radiant Charizard. Now, I had also once said that Lost Box Radiant Charizard was like probably higher end of tier two, probably like could maybe squeak it into tier one and i still kind of stand by that and the reason i do is because lost box radiant charizard i feel like is one of those decks where you really need to make sure that everything is going exactly according to your plan because the moment that like you can't get that last game last big ko with radiant charizard gonna feel real bad or not being able to remove a path is gonna feel bad because you're so reliant on that one copy of radiant charizard it's really difficult but to kind of counteract myself a little bit this deck is also most protected and keeping all of their sableyes and comfies and charizards safe because they're playing spirit tomb manaphy and jirachi to be able to protect the cram the sableye the comfy the charizard and you're also playing Technical Machine De-Evolution, which I think is really cool to add into this deck. Because if you can get Lost Mine set up, and you're able to put damage counters on a bunch of stuff, and then you just kind of pop a De-Evolution onto your anything, I don't know, Manaphy for, <laughs> why not, right? Put the De-Evolution on Manaphy, attach an energy, De-Evolution. You can take big prizes. I think De-Evolution is a really cool card in Lost Box because in Lost Box, you're putting a lot of damage counters in places, especially decks that have a lot of big Pokemon that they evolve into with rare candy like Charizard or Gardevoir. All you got to do is get, you know, six damage counters or seven on them and then just De-Evolution it and take two, three prizes. And now they're out the Charmanders. They're out the rare candy and got this awkward Gardevoir extra Charizard just kind of sitting in their hand all clunky like. So... I like this list that I think it's very, I think it was very well picked for this person. They put this list together, gosh darn almost perfectly. However, I'm still not a full believer yet. 
I would definitely say that this deck is tier one. It's definitely something you're going to have to think of. There's so many Lost Box decks right now, and that's something that's super cool to note. You got Lost Box Paradox, you got Lost Tina, you got Turbo Lost Box, you got Lost Box that's playing with Kyogre, Lost Box Charizard, you got... It's crazy. There's so many Lost Box decks out there right now, and I love it. And there's so many cool things that they can be doing with this, and I'm glad to see it. So, those are all of our deck lists here. I'll see you in that outro. Alrighty, guys. And that was our top 16 deck list from Stuttgart Regionals. Very diverse with different ways to play Rapid Box and different ways to play Charizard EX, different ways to play the Lost Box engine like Lost Paradox and Tina. We got Gardevoir in there. You got Stall. You got Maridon. You got a Mew deck in there. It was awesome. And I'm so glad to see that all these different things were coming out of the woodworks and really showing up here at this Regionals. If you haven't yet, don't forget to leave a like, smash the subscribe button, because I really do appreciate all of your guys' support. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!